What's going on YouTube? It's Blunt the Video back with a very special video. This time, we're going to be taking a look at my top 31 favorite horror films of all time. Let's get it started. Demon. Kicking things off with Humberto Bob's Demons, you got an amazing fucking movie here set in a movie theater of all places uh, with lots of cool demons, lots of cool special effects, lots of action. That's one thing about this film, it is action packed. Uh, and there's a very amazing stalker scene in the beginning of the film that's uh, very unsettling and you got a crazy fucking score in this film. You got tons of kick-ass music. It's, it's amazing. This is the kind of movie that you could put on to like a newbie horror fan and uh, maybe they'd only seen like the Freddy vs. Jasons or the, you know, the Chuckies and stuff like that. And then you throw on a movie like this and they'll be like, holy shit, like there's something to this horror stuff. And yes, there is. This is the kind of stuff that uh, you kind of... Like, uh, for me, anyway, I, I didn't know that this was even existed when I was a kid. Like, this is a movie I had to discover later on in my uh, my years of, of uh, you know, becoming a horror fan, um, more refined horror fan, you know, sifting through all the stuff, looking at all the franchises, getting those out of the way, and really starting to, like, get down to the nitty-gritty, uh, you know, movies like this and, like, Maniac. Like, those are all those movies I kind of discovered at the same time. So, I, I love this one. You should definitely check this one out. Demons. No, Moving into 2006, we got The Hills Have Eyes. This is a movie that I love. I love the original, but this movie to me, it's so fucking brutal. It's so brutal. It's so graphic, and it's so uh, greasy and hot, and makes you sweat, and it's just disgusting to watch, but it's so interesting to me to watch, like, this stuff. I've always been really interested in, like, uh, you know, government testing and that kind of stuff, and this movie's chock full of that. I love the, the gas station clerk guy. He's so greasy and gross, and just a sick fuck, man, and just getting wrapped up with these lunatics would be a nightmare in its own right, but it's it's even more of a nightmare for the family that has to go through the fucking shit, right? Uh, super crazy effects in this film, lots of practical effects, you got uh, the one dude, I'm blanking on his name, I probably won't be able to find it right now, but uh, Ted Levine, so Ted Levine is the father that gets fucking just burnt to a crisp, like Louisiana frog cake style, man, it's crazy, uh, Hills Have Eyes, I love it. I've been hallucinating for a while, ever since... What? Since I first saw Videodrome. Moving along, we got David Cronenberg's Videodrome, starring James Woods. Fucking kick-ass Canadian horror film. This is the kind of stuff that, uh, when I watched when I was a kid, I was like, that is fucked. That's so twisted. When he pulls the gun out of his gut, puts the tape in his gut, like, all that stuff was just so disgusting to me. And, like, even, like, the weird Videodrome show itself is just very eerie and so uh, simplistic and just very uh, raw. It's so unsettling. Like, me and my uncle, we've talked about this film for hours at times and just been like, how twisted, uh, how twistedly real did that show look? You know what I mean? It's, it's great. This is... Uh, chock full of great special effects again like you're gonna get tons of cool uh, really insane David Cronenberg uh, just sh like stuff happening like uh, along with The Fly and along with Rabid uh, those are like my favorite Cronenberg films I, I think that uh, this this is fantastic fantastic the biggest bloodiest horror show in history I drink your blood. I drink your blood from 1971. This is a movie about a bunch of like hippies or like uh, satanic fuckers, and uh, they're just out of hand, man. Like their dialogue is so ridiculous, but it's so amazing. It's so fun to watch this movie. If you don't know the plot of it, uh, like I said, a bunch of hippies. They go, they discover this little shitty small town, and they start fucking around there. But there's a little boy who's got plans of his own, and he says, Listen, I don't want any assholes fucking around my town. And uh, he basically does some stuff to uh, to something that they're about to ingest, so to speak. And, uh, yeah, shit goes to hell for these fucking hippies, man. It's awesome. So cool. There's so many uh, fucked up scenes where, like, there's a scene where they kill a bunch of rats... They're like, who can kill the most rats? And it's like, whoever can kill the most rats gets to be like the leader that night. It's so fucked, but great film from uh, 1971. I drink your blood. Hello. You know the part in scary movies where somebody does something really stupid and everybody hates them for it? This is it. 
Jeepers Creepers. This is a movie that was directed by a scumbag, and we all know that, but let's just look at the film as it is. This is a movie that came out in, what, 2001? I was nine years old. Seen this movie in the drive-in. It was either the drive-in or the theater. I def we watched everything growing up, but when I seen this movie, and you see that fucking, like, the dude standing in the farm, and he's putting the bodies down that tube, that's so fucking disgusting to me, man. Like, I was so petrified of that. I was so scared of seeing that driving home because we used to drive out of town all the time and I was like waiting to see the creeper fucking pour some shit down a tube or you know if this this movie really freaked me out as a kid but uh, I really like the acting I think Justin Long is fantastic in it I think the sister is fine but Justin Long to me he's a great actor I think he's not used enough in like serious roles and if he is if you know any good serious roles he's in leave it in the comments and I'll check it out because I'm a big fan and uh yeah, the creeper looks amazing. I think the sequel is amazing as well. Part three, not the biggest fan of, but Jeepers Creepers one, fuck yeah, killer. The first John Carpenter film on the list, The Thing. Yes, this movie is fucking outrageously awesome, man. This is a movie that I first discovered when I was a kid. My stepdad was watching it. I'll never forget it. It was a scene where the blood testing was happening. I was like, oh my god, this is gross. This is fucking gross, man. Like, I could smell that blood cooking. You know what I mean? I could smell it in the air. And it was just, oh man, this is nasty. But you can't look away, right? And that's the story with most of us horror fuckers, right? Like, we say, like, oh, we were so sicked out, but we couldn't look away. And that's that's what I, what I was like with the thing because this is a movie that I this is one of the movies I probably watched the most of on this list uh, maybe not maybe not but uh, it's up there for sure the thing by John Carpenter amazing fucking special effects by Rob Bottin he did such great work on this film and it's amazing commentary on this as well with John Carpenter and Kurt Russell highly recommended I think that they recorded it for a laser disc edition but it's so good it's so fucking good John Carpenter's a thing classic. Rogero Deodato's 1980 classic, Cannibal Holocaust. This is like one of the most well-known exploitation films of all time. And by all rights, it's deserving of that because this movie is kick-ass. This isn't just like one of those movies that's just totally fucked up to be fucked up, but there's a story to tell in this. And uh, I actually wrote a paper on this film in college. Uh, I was arguing that uh, the real, like, who are the real cannibals in Cannibal Holocaust. Pretty, pretty much basic fucking thesis statement or whatever for this film but it was a good paper and this movie I got to watch an exploitation movie for school you know and I watched all the fucking special features on this Grindhouse releasing amazing fucking work amazing work uh, yeah this this is the kind of movie that is like a gateway was my personal gateway drug to uh, exploitation films like I always heard about this watched it on YouTube like years ago and I was like wow that's fucking crazy because I first heard about it for, through all the uh uh, like the video nasties like my research through the video nasties and i heard like there's some animal cruelty and stuff and like to be honest with you like i don't think the animal cruelties in this is like i mean it's fucked up what they did that turtle but there's way worse shit that happens in real life every day out there like in the amazon you think they give a fuck about feelings down there when they're hungry no they don't and uh that's just a fact of life if you ask me and this movie is so fucking uh real uh like real looking when it comes to uh, the, the B-roll footage or like you know the the, the student or the, the documentary crew like their footage looks very real because a lot of it is shot like kind of off the cuff and like you know there's a scene where like they're all changing and like even the chicks like changing with the dudes and I don't know it's got like this this strange quality to it which I really like and I, I love the doctor in this film you know the professor in the film that goes down to uh, find what find out what happened and he ends up stumbling upon all the, the film cans and just him putting together the film, like all those scenes, it's so fucking cool. I love it. I love the way that the natives look in this film. I love the way they, they react to everything. I love how all the fucking documentary crew just gets their shit fucking torn out at the end of the film. Like, they, they rape that bitch, and then they, like, beat her to death, which she deserved. I'm not condoning rape, but that bitch deserved it, trust me. Uh, and if you... <laughs> If you need to watch a crazy fucked up film that's like this, you got like you watch this and you're like, I want more, like the same way I was, Cannibal Ferox. J not not as good, but just just you know, well up there with it. So Cannibal Holocaust, amazing film. Let's roll, bro. In this neighborhood is a house where souls never rest.
Tales from the Hood. This is a fucking great black exploitation horror anthology starring uh, a crazy cast of characters. You got Clarence Williams III, uh, you got uh, Anthony Griffith, David Allen Greer, uh, Rusty Cundy himself, Corbin Bernstein. You got a lot of fucking people that are well known uh, from like the, the mid 90s uh, black cinema, so to speak, or black TV as well. And this, this movie is so memorable to me. I found this on D on uh, VHS at a thrift store, a shitty thrift store, and they had like five tapes. This is one of them. This is the DVD of it. But I watched it with my dad, and I was like, this was so fucking cool. I was obsessed. I love the story with the dolls, but my favorite story is uh, definitely uh, the, the last one. But uh, the second, like, you know what? I, I, I argue with myself a lot of times. I say, do I like that last one, or do I like the cop one, like the first one? Uh, because I really like the cop one. I like the wraparound story as well. I think that's great. That's a good one on its own. Uh, I think that would have made a good, they could have uh, went a different route and made that a story, you know what I mean? Like within it, like its own thing. Uh, I, thought that, I think that would have been cool, but I, I love this film. Part two, not as great. And I know that Rusty Cundiff and Darren Scott put together a film called, I think, American Nightmares or something like that. I've yet to watch that, but uh, if you're looking for a good anthology film you, and you want to watch, you know, uh, you know, say you want to watch a crazy triple feature, throw on... Uh, Candyman, uh, Menace to Society, and then Tales from the Hood, and then you get like your real, your fake, and then your mix. You know what I mean? So fuck yeah, Tales from the Hood is great. Pieces. Wow. You do not need to go to Texas for a Chainsaw Massacre. That is 100% correct. This movie delivers everything that you think Texas Chainsaw Massacre was going to deliver. And when you first watch it, you're like, wow, Chainsaw Massacre, it's not that graphic. This movie is fucking graphic. All right, you get a chick that gets killed in an elevator. You get a chick that gets killed in a fucking bathtub. Or not a bathtub, a swimming pool. A uh, chick that gets killed in a fucking water bed. Like, it's it's unreal. It's unreal. There's a scene in this movie where this chick's like, nothing's better than smoking pot and fucking in a water bed. And like a real robot voice it's so fucking cringeworthy but i love this movie it's great i love the opening with the kid just killing his mom like yeah this is uh this is great i think this is actually a spanish film but amazing and once again with grindhouse amazing fucking release you got tons of uh you got two complete versions of the film you got uh a uh, commentary with uh, the, the star Jack, Jack Taylor. You got a uh, 42nd Street Memories, which is an all-new feature-length documentary containing interviews with Sam Sherman, Bill Lustig, Larry Cohen, Frank and Helen, Frank Helen Lauder, uh, Buddy G, who did Combat Shock, uh, Jeff Lieberman, and many others. And I have not watched that, I don't think, so I'll have to check that out. But Pieces, fuck yeah, amazing. This release is quality, too. Definitely check it out. What happened was true. Chainsaw is one of the most brutal films of my childhood. It doesn't have a whole lot, like I said, with the pieces the thing. It doesn't have a whole lot of brutal of stuff happening in, in it that you see. You don't really see like the chainsaw go into anybody or anything like that. But it's just the implied graphic grossness of this film that disturbed me when I was a kid. And even the opening when that guy reads that stuff, I'm like, this is real. This is fucking real, man. This actually happened. You know what I mean? Like, that's that, that's just the way I looked at it. When there was a horror film like this that there wasn't any su supernatural element to it, I was like, it's real. It's fucking real, man. And, yeah, this, this movie is just really fucking gritty. And I actually got to see this on 35mm with my brother and my cousin. We saw both, actually, part one and two at uh, Rainbow Cinema. It was the actual last 35mm screening at that theater, which is a shame, but uh, it was amazing to get to see that. And this movie... Oh, man. Like, the opening of this film, with, like, that corpse on the thing, like, the Tom Savini effects, like, ugh, fucking wet and gross-looking, just humid and hot, and, you know, I met the, uh, the, the hitchhiker guy, and he said that it was so fucking hot, man. I said, oh, I couldn't imagine being down there in Texas. My blood's too thick for Texas, you know what I mean? Like, Johnny Depp's blood was too thick for Nevada and Fear and Loathing. I can't go to Texas, because I'll probably fucking die. Uh, Start talking you know, but if I was going to die in Texas, I'd want to die by a chainsaw. It's, it's fitting. If it had a mind, you could reason with it. The Blob. Holy shit. This movie is so fucking uh, monumental in my life. I watched it growing up. 
I watched the original growing up. I watched the original way before I seen this one. And when I did see this one, I, I really looked at it very critically. You know, because I said, no, I, I hold the blob very close to my heart. And you're not fucking with the blob. And then I watch this and I'm like, wow, like this is awesome. Like, this is great. It has the guy from Platoon in it. Like, oh my God, like it's so good. And they flip it where they make Kevin Dillon uh like the not the badass but like the hero at the end and like you know like and he's such a misunderstood kind of guy because like you can tell he's not like this goofy fuck that the cops and the small town have him made out to be he's just like this dude that just wants to like work on his bike and like maybe like you know get laid and shit like that like, like who doesn't you know what i mean and like they're just making him out to be a fuckhead like i think that those asshole jocks in this film are more of the fucking goofy clowns than kevin dillon so yeah, great special effects, lots of cool shots uh, inside of the movie theater, of course. Uh, yeah, just a great, worthy remake. Right up there with the thing, right up there with the fly, the blob. In the Amityville Horror. The Amityville Horror. Yes, this movie I love. I think it's one of the best, uh, like, haunted, haunted house films of all time. Not the best, but one of my favorites. I love the acting. I think that uh, James Brolin is amazing in this film. Goes through this crazy transformation of being like this, you know, pretty decent dude to just being this fucking prick. And yeah, it's it's nuts. This movie to me is uh, right on right on the boundary of being one of those movies where I'm like, that's real, you know, because there's supernatural shit to this. But it is very weird, man. Like that basement and just everything in this film just freaks me out. Even like the house itself looks terrifying. Who the fuck would want to live in a house that looks like that? You know, like, Jesus Christ. Like, the eyes, like, the shot with the eyes. Like, oh, man. Terrifying. Like, my mom even said when she was a kid when she saw this, she said it was fucking terrifying. And I agree, man. Like, it, it's it's very scary. Like, get out of the house. All that shit. Fuck, brutal, man. Yeah. I also love part two. I gotta admit that. I like part three as well. But part one and two. Like, I think a lot of people sleep on Amityville part two. It's good. It's really fucking good. So, yeah. Amityville horror. <laughs> Nightmare on Elm Street, Wes Craven's fucking classic slasher film, man. What better movie could you watch on like a fucking October night? You know, you got Freddy Krueger at his best, at his greasiest, at his grossest, and uh, you know, you, you got an amazing cast. You got Heather Landenkamp, you got Johnny Depp, you got John Saxon, you got Robert Englund as Freddy Krueger. You got Wes Craven directing. Like, what more could you want? Like, this movie just bleeds, uh, uh, you know, whore fanatic. Uh, it, it, it just demands to have a fucking following. You know what I mean? Freddy Krueger is one of those guys that, you know, along with, like, Michael Myers and Jason Voorhees is just, like, commands authority. And Yeah, this this to me is the best Friday, or Nightmare on Elm Street story. And uh, this is the one that I reach for mostly. Uh, as, as well as part two and three, and I like them in that order. I like one, two, then three in that order, uh, and then everything after that I can skip, I can pass on. But this movie, uh, my friend Marky was actually nice enough to send me this uh, uh, Gatefold Anchor Bay double tape. Fucking just it's cool. I appreciate it, Mark. And uh, yeah, I'm, I love. I'm so happy I get to put this in my collection. And uh, yeah, Nightmare on Elm Street. Like it's it's Freddy Krueger at his best. The book is bound in human flesh and inked in human blood. The Evil Dead, Sam Raimi. My God. This movie has so much cool special effects that I think that since Evil Dead 2 is Evil Dead 2, that this movie kind of like gets swept under the rug a bit, you know what I mean? A lot of people prefer 2 over 1, but I think 1 is very admirable, very spooky, very scary. A lot of stop motion animation, lots of really cool graphics. Or special effects, rather. Lots of cool creature designs. Uh, fuck yeah. This is before they teamed up with uh, K&B Effects. And they do resort to a lot of stop motion. But it just so happens I love stop motion. So, yeah, this movie fucking rules. Ash, you know, you got the other dude. I actually met the other dude. What's his name? Hal Delrich. I met that guy. And, uh, yeah, it was pretty cool. But The Evil Dead and Evil Dead 2, I think I could watch any time. But Evil Dead 1, I think, is just superior to me. We've got the first Fulci film on the list here. We got Lucio Fulci's City of the Living Dead, also known as The Gates of Hell. But this movie also starts off what is known as the Gates of Hell trilogy, that being uh, City of the Living Dead, The Beyond, 
and or excuse me yeah the beyond i always get the beyond and from beyond those names fucked up and uh house by the cemetery and i like them in that order again like uh same with fucking freddy freddy krueger films so with this movie you got a really crazy opening with a priest hanging himself and uh very disturbing noises all throughout the film lots of cool sound effects lots of cool soundtrack and amazing special effects like some of the greatest stuff one thing that i'm slacking on is knowing uh a lot of the italian makeup artists like i need to know their names i need to find out what else they've done even if it's just like you know some little shitty movie that uh you know, got swept under the rug kind of thing i, I want to know it because i love special effects and uh I, f I find world uh you know foreign films like italian japanese like they just they push the limit so far and this, this movie is no exception amazing Somewhere between science and superstition, there is another world. We got The Exorcist. This is one of my favorite films of all time. Like, of, of any kind of cinema. I think it's perfect. I think Reagan is fucking terrifying. I think, uh, like, the priest, he's so cool. I, I love him. I would like to have a beer with him and smoke with him. He's that kind of guy. Uh, yeah, this, this movie's very haunting. This is a movie that... I didn't think it was real when I was a kid, but I thought that you could actually be possessed and need to have an exorcist. And maybe that shit's real, but this movie just made me think, yeah, it's fucking real. Like, I will be possessed if I'm not careful. So I was a good boy when I was a kid, you know? I only smoked opiates, not fucking crack. Um, yeah, this movie just freaks me the fuck out, man. It's so terrifying. I, even, like, the scenes with uh, the dude's mom, like, the priest's mom going down the stairs, like, during that dream, and, like, he can't really talk and all that. It's so fucked up. Like, oh, man, so very unsettling. Like, to me, like, Reagan isn't even the scariest part of this film. I think there's way more scary fucking shit happening in this film. Like, everything at the beginning, like, when they're in Iran and they're digging through all the ruins and, you know, they find the... Like, the, the statue of Pazuzu, and even, like, the flashes of Pazuzu throughout the film, like, those are very horrific to me. Uh, yeah, this movie sticks out like a sore thumb to me in terms of amazingness. Like, one of the best horror films of all time, The Exorcist. We got The House on Haunted Hill with Vincent Price. It's my favorite Vincent Price film. I think it's amazing. It's basically uh, this rich prick who wants to throw a party with his wife and events, invites a bunch of strangers over. And uh, basically, they got to survive the night. And this movie was remade in the early 2000s, and it's not that great. But that movie did scare the shit out of me when I was a kid. Because it came out in like 2002 or 2001. I'm like nine years old. I see that shit. And uh, like the shitty CGI at the end fucked me up for a while. I will admit that. But this movie is the kind of movie that you watch and just have a great time. Vincent Price is just like a badass, slick character in this film. And like part of me wishes that Vincent Price was like how he is in this film he's like full of one-liners and all that kind of stuff like there's a part where this old lady's like uh what kind of ghost would want me and uh vincent price is like well any self-respecting one like it, it, he's just like a slick coy motherfucker that gets all the ass you know what i mean it's it's nuts i love vincent price and i love house by haunted hill uh house on haunted hill rather excuse me color me blood red fiendish is the word for it Herschel Gordon Lewis made the list with Color Me Blood Red. This is a great horror film where uh, this painter, he's, uh, he's, he's at a loss. He's got painter's block, so to speak. And basically he discovers that blood is a fantastic shade of red on the canvas. And basically he starts to paint with his blood and then his girlfriend's looking pretty fucking sexy one night and next thing you know he's cutting her open and using her as fucking ink man and painting with the blood it's so fucked up and so gross but this is like a great movie from the 60s this is like a it's like half beach movie half fucking psychological thriller fucking blood splatter film it's nuts uh so cool such a great ending too uh the methods of which he goes to in order to obtain blood is fucked uh, <laughs> it's so fucked up, man. Great film, though. Uh, if you've never watched any H.G. Lewis films, start with uh, Blood Feast, uh, Color Me Blood Red, uh, 2000 Maniacs, Wizard of Gore, stuff like that. I think his most well-known stuff. I think that he does a movie called Gore Gore Girls, or Gore Girls, something like that. I've yet to watch that, but I've heard it's really good, so I'll have to be checking that one out, too. But Color Me Blood Red, fuck yeah. 
explorers in the further regions of experience. Demons to some, angels to others. Hellraiser, my recent obsession. So, as of lately, uh, meaning like the last like week, I watched Hellraiser 1, 2, 3, and 4. And I'm on a roll, I'm gonna watch the rest of them, but I just, I think Hellraiser 1 is a movie that I slept on way too long. Like, there was times, I wouldn't watch this when I was a kid, because I thought that was too fucking scary. I thought Pinhead was like, too much. I'm like, nope. I'm like, that's too fucking much. Look at his head. Like, that's twisted. Like, th I'm gonna have nightmares for sure. Like, I was, I was known for having, I wouldn't tell people I had nightmares, but I knew I would have fucking nightmares when I watched shit like this, and I did. And, uh, but I love this movie. This, this movie's great. You got Pinhead, the Cenobites. It's basically like a love story where the Cenobites are kind of on the back burner, but, like, there's a lot of horrific gore all throughout the film. You got, uh, amazing character, uh, plot between, uh, Frank, who's this corpse in the attic, and this chick named Julia, and her husband, who's Frank the corpse's brother, and, uh, Frank the corp- or, uh, Larry- the, the non-corpse brother is a father of this chick who gets entwined with Hellraiser, or Pinhead rather, by fucking her out the box, like she shouldn't have been, and uh, yeah. If you never watch these movies, definitely check out 1, 2, 3, and 4, because they've all been a blast. A lot of people say part 4 is like shit, because it's in space, it goes to space, like Leprechaun 4, Jason X, but uh, I like it, I love it. It's kind of like an anthology film in a way, because you go through three generations of these guys, of this family, and uh, like the creators of the toy box. Uh, Les Machins, or whatever. Great stuff. I love Hellraiser. Uh, Clyde Barker, he's a genius. I love Candyman. I love Hellraiser. I've actually got a copy of The Hellbound Heart over there, which I've never read. I think I cracked it once and was just like, eh, I'll, I'll check this out later. But uh, great film. Amazing special effects. Soundtrack, amazing. When the Cenobites show up at this at the end of this film, you hear like that bell toll, like, bang, like, brutal. I love it. So, Hellraiser. <laughs> Here we have a quiet little motel, when in fact it has now become known as the scene of the crime. Alfred Hitchcock has also made the list with Psycho, uh, the story of Norman Bates, the Bates Motel, and just everything that goes through Norman Bates' fucked up twisted head, along with his mother's uh, voice in the back of his mind telling him to do shit. Yeah, I feel bad for Norman, I really do feel bad for Norman, and... Uh, I really did enjoy the Bates Motel t television series. You should check that out. I do recommend that. As, as, a, as a huge Psycho fan in terms of Psycho 1, 2, and 3, and 4 to some degree. Uh, mostly Psycho 1 and 2. Uh, fuck the Vince Vaughn movie. But this, this movie, it's so fucking good. So good. Such a crazy plot twist like 25 minutes into the film. If you've yet to watch Psycho, just watch it. Just watch it. Uh, famous story is Alfred Hitchcock would not... Uh, be admitted to the film if they were late because they didn't want you know he didn't want the film to be ruined and which was great but i always thought like so what so you got a bunch of goons like hired fucking 2000 movie theaters across america like saying no listen cuz you ain't fucking coming in like <laughs> it's fucking crazy to me but great film great horror film uh is it really a horror film is a psychological kind of film i think it's a horror film like you got a chick that gets killed in a bathtub by a dude dressed up as a fucking woman like that's horrifying that's my worst nightmare you know, so, yeah, Alfred Hitchcock, Psycho. Friday the 13th, Part 5, A New Beginning. Friday the 13th, Part 5. This is a movie that I grew up with. I love it. I think it's one of my favorite Friday the 13th part, parts uh, in the entire franchise. I really like 4, 5, and 6. I really like 1 and 2. I like them all to some degree, but uh, this is my favorite. This is my go-to because I just love the story. I love Junior and Ma, like... The fucking rednecks out in the out in the woods. I love uh, Demon getting his fucking ass literally handed to him inside of a porta potty. Uh, yeah, those enchiladas. Fuck. Uh, such a great movie and tons of quotes that me and my brother and my cousin we use all the time. Like sometimes weekly, you know, you might hear "Come get your hands dirty." Like, fuck, it's so good. Such a memorable, fun movie from my childhood. And that's that's what this list was all about. It was just me talking about movies that i love from my childhood and I, i'm having a blast doing this to be honest with you so thanks for watching if you've watched this far uh friday 13th part 5 how the fuck do you have friday 13th part 5 after psycho there's no real rhyme or reason to this list child's play one the voodoo fucking doll man the voodoo doll if you ask me 
This is a movie that, uh, in a franchise, I think a lot of people forget. It's a fucking voodoo film. This is a black magic film. Very twisted, cold Chicago film with just a killer doll thrown in the mix. And a great detective story as well. Like, I love uh, Chris Sarandon as uh, Detective Mike Harris or Mike Norris or some shit like that. Uh, Catherine Hicks as the mom is great. Andy Barkley is fantastic. Uh, Alex Vincent as Andy Barkley, rather. Uh, I grew up with this film. It's my favorite Child's Play film. I think it's great. I love it. I love the ending. I love how Chucky gets killed. I love how Chucky almost gets killed and then comes back kind of thing, like burnt as a burnt as a crispy fucking piece of chicken, but he does come back to strangle that fucking uh, basically meathead from uh, All in the Family is what he looks like to me, but yeah, if you've never watched Child's Play, uh, but you've watched like the new one and all that kind of stuff, check this one out. This is where it's at. Even part one, or part two and three are also admirable, but this is it, man. The scene with John, the, the, the witch doctor, that's my favorite scene in this film. It's my favorite scene, almost one of my favorite scenes in franchise history, next to uh, certain scenes in uh, Nightmare on Elm Street and uh, Hellraiser and shit like that, but fuck yeah, great film. Hey, let's make love. Rosemary's Baby. Yes, the ultimate, ultimate fucking film on this list. This is probably my favorite film of all time. Uh, I think it's amazing. You got so much crazy sound effects in this film. You got a crazy uh, demon rape scene, which isn't something you get in every film. Uh, you get lots of really cool shots of New York. You get lots of twisted creepiness with these old folks and... Just a very unsettling ending, and I, I just think this movie's perfect. It's so good. I, I I would rank this up there beside movies like Godfather, movies like Apocalypse Now, and Exorcist. Like I think this is better than Exorcist to me. Uh, this is probably better than every movie on this list uh, to me in in some degree. But fuck yeah, Rosemary's Baby. It's a movie that I didn't really give like the biggest chance. Like when I was a kid, I was like, it's too boring, it's too slow. Now I'm just like, fuck me. Like this movie's tripping me out, man. Uh, yeah, great film, great ending. Like. Pfft. What happened to its eyes? Like, whew, crazy film. Howdy, folks. You like blood, violence, freaks of nature? Rob Zombie's House of a Thousand Corpses. Yes, this movie right here is pretty fucking quality, man. I gotta say, when it came out, I remember watching it and being like, wow, that's very, uh, unlike any film I've ever seen in my life. This is like uh, a mashup YouTube video before there was mashup YouTube videos. You know what I mean? Like kind of a, a fan film in a way. And to me, it, it just comes off so gross and gritty. And, uh, you know, the mixture of using like handheld video, like, like shot on video and then like shot on film stuff. Like, like the, the contrast between like He's different shots in this film is just really strange to look at, but so entertaining, so entertaining. You got an amazing cast. You got Sid Haig, Bill Mosley. You got Rob Zombie's fucking wife kicking ass in this film. Uh, you even have uh, Karen Black from Children of Terror, which is a great anthology film from the seventies TV film. <clears throat> That's no, uh, notably, most notably known for uh, the like the tiki doll, like the you know the little tiki doll running through the apartment. But fuck yeah, House of a Thousand Corpses is great film. I'm really looking forward to Rob Zombie's. Uh, uh, third installment in this franchise, which is Three from Hell. Of course, this movie's being followed up by uh, Devil's Rejects, which is amazing in its own right, but to me, I just think this is one of those movies from my childhood that I was, like, blown away by. I thought it was so unlike anything I've ever seen. Lucio Fulci Zombie is amazing. I love this film. I love the effects in this film. I, I honestly do think that, in some ways, the effects in this film are the best zombie effects ever done better than Day of the Dead, better than Dawn of the Dead, uh, especially like uh, some of the standout zombies. Some of the standout uh, special effects that is non-zombie is just as fucking great. Like, you got all kinds of stuff. Like, Lucio Fulci d never disappointed me so far with any of the films I've watched. One of the most recent ones I watched was New York Ripper. Uh, that was actually a long time ago I, I watched that, but for the first time, and I was like, wow, this is crazy. So, I'm so stoked to look in, uh, to looking at the rest of his uh, filmography, but this film right here, it, it just, it had to be on the list. There's so many memorable scenes. Uh, the, the scene on the boat with, like, uh, I have, like, a, a cool kind of thing right here I was going to show. I was initially going to show this as the, uh, as, as the, the variant or whatever, but 
See, it has like that fucking fat zombie on the boat. That's I love that scene, and I love uh, I love the scene, of course, where the zombie fights the shark. But uh, yeah, I, I just think there's so much more to this movie than like that. Like, I'm not saying that's a goofy scene. It is a goofy scene, but there's so much more to this film than the zombie fighting the shark. Like, I think that it's it's just got so many great elements, and it, it just it's swampy. It's one of those swampy films that makes you sweat. So Lucio Fulci zombie, gotta watch that shit. Gotta love it. Fancy girls and their fancy dresses and their lipstick. Laughing and dancing. But you stop them, don't you? I can't stop them. But you do, don't you? So unfortunately, I do not have a case for this, but this is Maniac. Joe Spinell, directed by William Lustig from 1980. Such an amazing film. It's a very loner film. Like, this is a great film to double feature with uh, Taxi Driver. It's, they're both from a shot in New York. Tons of crazy New York shots. Uh, Frank Vito. Frank Zito, sorry. He's such a greasy guy. And, like, uh, me and my uncle joke around. It's like, you know, he's like this greasy dude. And then all of a sudden he's just like acting like he's like this this artist kind of paint dude, painter dude and all this. And like, mostly landscapes. All that kind of shit. Uh, really fun movie to watch. Very cool payoff at the end. Frank Zito, he gets he gets killed in a very rough way. It's it's insane to think that like this is like I think the last movie that Joe Spinell worked on. Like he worked on Academy Award winning films. Like for fuck's sake, he was in Godfather Part One and Two, and he was in Taxi Driver. Like you know, it's it's crazy. Like there's a really cool channel on YouTube called Ghost Bait. He just did a really great uh, review on uh, Taxi Driver. He talked about Frank Zito. It, it, yeah, it's such a good movie. If you've never seen Maniac, but you've seen the remake of Maniac with Elijah Wood, check this one out, because it's so much better. So much better. Such a great movie. I actually got to watch this uh, screen at Odyssey Records here in London, Ontario, which is a great little record shop. I actually shot a uh, promo for their video, for their uh, store, which I've yet to release, so stay tuned for that. But uh, Maniac, fuck yeah. Coming soon. Jolting tales of horror. Creep show. Moving on to George A. Romero and Stephen King's Love Child Creep Show. What an amazing horror anthology with tons of great stories that stick out. Uh, very memorable stuff, like the story with Stephen King, where he gets covered in like fucking, uh, you know, wildlife or not wildlife, but like greenery, shrubbery, and all that kind of stuff. He basically turns into a giant fucking bud of weed. And uh, it's awesome. You got a great story involving cockroaches at the end. A uh, really good story involving uh, getting stuck in water. Uh, you know, getting buried up to up to your neck in sand and then the tide comes in. Fuck. That would be brutal, man. But the stick out story in this film to me is the crate with Fluffy. My God. I, I, I consider getting a Fluffy tattoo from time to time. But it, it's one of the best... Like, they could, they could have stretched that. I would watch a movie that was based on that story if it was done right. If Tom Savini was behind it, no CG, anything like that, I would totally be behind that. I would back that on Kickstarter or Patreon. But, uh, fuck yeah, Creepshow is so good. Even, I love the sequel, too. I've never seen the third one, but the sequel is great. I love, I think that the Indian head, or the Indian, the cigar store Indian story, I love it. If I could switch out anything from this, I would switch out... The cockroach one, put the Indian head one in this one, and I'd be happy. But, fuck yeah, great film. I love it. The one. The only. The classic. Halloween. John Carpenter makes his second appearance on the list with Halloween, which is arguably the scariest film of my childhood. Me and my cousin watched this tons of times on VHS. I have a taped VHS with Halloween 1 and 2. We had it on non-stop. And the music played throughout the house. But we were fucking assholes because we would watch these movies and then at nighttime it'd be a different story. Because in the day we'd be like, yeah, Jason Voorhees, Michael Myers, Chucky. And then at nighttime we'd be like, Jason, Michael Voorhees, uh, for Chucky. Uh. You know what I mean? Like, Because we thought they were going to fucking get us. You know? And, oh, man. I used to live in an apartment building when I was a kid. Looked out my window and fucking seen a guy standing out there. And uh, he was just, like, having a smoke or something, honestly. Like, when I look back at it now. But I was like, oh, my God. You're gonna fucking be up the stairs. You're gonna kill me. Like, you know, it was ridiculous. But 
uh, yeah, great film. Michael Myers, Michael Myers rather. Um, Sam Loomis, Doctor Loomis, who's just you know played by, um, God damn it, Donald Pleasance. Yes, uh, amazing image right there. Very, very well known musical score. Very, uh, you know, monumental in the slasher genre. Uh, credited as one of the the best slashers, and I, I agree with that. I think it is my favorite slasher film. I am Dracula. Dracula, the first Universal monster on the list. I love this movie. I think Bela Lugosi is Dracula. I think he really actually is Dracula. Like, I think after the movie, like, he just fucking flew back to Transylvania with a fucking $40 bag of fucking Canadian weed. Fucked off. Dracula. Bela Lugosi is Dracula in the 1931 James Whale, excuse me, Todd Browning film Dracula. Such a great universal monster. Very iconic. Uh, lots of crazy atmosphere. If you're going to watch this film, I'd watch the original version, not with the Philip Glass score. I think the Philip Glass score might be fantastic to some, but to me, it, it has nothing compared to the original score. Uh, also, check out the Spanish version. I've heard is very well done as well. I've never watched it personally, but I've heard great things. Uh, they substitute like spiders and stuff for actual rats, because I guess back then they thought rats were too dirty to be in like a Hollywood film, but uh, yeah, I think this movie is great. I think uh, Dwight Fry is fantastic. Fucking fantastic as Renfield. Like, he's one of my favorite characters in all of horror film history. So, yeah, great film. It gets up and kills. The people it kills get up and kill. George A. Romero's Dawn of the Dead. This is got to be one of the best films ever made, period. I think it's so good. It's, it's an action film. It's a buddy film. It's a horror film. It's a biker film. Uh, it's a trapped in a mall film. You know, it's so fucking cool. It's so great. Like, the thought of being alone in a mall, like, with, like, a gun shop and like grocery stores and all and like a bank and all this cash like all, like they had it made they fucking had it made and i think one of one of my biggest piss offs about this film is how roger like it goes all to his head and he just you know he fucking gets himself bit and it was like what the fuck are you doing you guys had it made like they needed him it's exactly like roger said in the film we got a lot more shit needed to be done before you can afford to lose me and that's a fact uh, i think if roger had have survived then they would have been able to fight off the bikers way better. I think so. Uh, if, if I had have uh, been with these guys, I would have said, as soon as they start getting close, let's start peeling, picking them off from up here. You know, and just moving around up on top. They're not going to be able to see us. Just place some lights pointing down so we can move around without being spotted. But, you know, I, I think that the ending of this film, uh, it's just, it, it's so perfect because you got Peter, a guy who's like, basically lost his family, lost his friends, lost Peter, lost Flyboy, or lost Roger, lost Flyboy, and, like, I, he just, it, I hate the thought of, like, him just going out like a punk at the end like that, but he just, he's like, you know what, fuck this, boom, comes up like a bad son of a bitch, kicks ass, takes names, uh, and hops on the helicopter and gets away, but I've read the comic book put out by IDW, and at the end of the comic, I'm pretty sure it says something like, the helicopter then starts it crashes basically or some shit like that it's like wow that's not very fucking good ending but it, at the end of this film she does say that they're low on gas so uh great film this is this is my favorite version to watch uh there's i think there's an even longer version of the film but yeah this this would be my favorite so the last film on the list that had no specific order Frankenstein, it's gotta be, it's gotta be, man, he's my favorite monster of all time, amazing opening in this film, you got a crazy opening in this film at the fucking graveyard, and just, like, the thought of, like, these guys digging up this body, and, like, because when I was a kid, and I was, like, you know, a body, like, a, I, I was pretty, f I, like, I knew that, like, a body was not, like, a friendly thing to be around, and these guys are digging them up. You know what I mean? These guys are cutting them down from the gallows and shit like that. Like, oh my god, so gross. And Dwight Fry as uh, Fritz in this, or Fitz, I think. Fritz, I'm pretty sure his name was Fritz, but he just, he's such a creepy little guy. Such a contrast. Like, an amazing actor, Dwight Fry. Like, 
you know, he, he can play anywhere from like Renfield at the beginning of Dracula to the Renfield at the end of Dracula to uh, this crazy son of a bitch, like even Cl uh, Colin Clive as uh, Henry Frankenstein, like, man, so fucking badass, such a badass film. And the only, the, I think that the only movie better than this is Bride of Frankenstein. And, uh, but I had to put this one on as, uh, as my favorite because it's just, it's so iconic. I watched this so many times growing up with my dad. Uh, it's, I've had so many good memories, uh, sitting around eating a steak dinner with my dad, watching Frankenstein. Uh, I love the opening of this film with, uh, Edward Van Sloan doing the, the little speech. It's, it's so cool. This is, this is great. Frankenstein is like the stuff that really influenced me to be a horror fan. And I think is probably one of the, this along with Dracula, Dawn of the Dead and the last couple films I listed. Those are the reasons I'm a horror fan and uh, I love it. I love the genre. I love everything about it. I love talking about horror films. So thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe and leave a comment on uh, a couple of your favorite horror films and uh, be sure to stay tuned for more stuff. So thanks you. So thank you and adios.